In a changing economy and a changing world, do the immigration rules need to change as well? You have a system that is broken at both ends. A system that really doesn't work. And the immigration system is broken. Let's be sensible. There's got to be a better way. In November, Americans will elect the people who will decide. Homeland. Immigration in America. Hello world and welcome back to the, another episode of The Bonita Show. We are here at the Tivoli Theater with the St. Louis International Film Festival where we have some awesome filmmakers. And right now I have Mr. Kircher here. He is also from um, KETC Channel 9, a local TV station, and they have a, um, a series on um, PBS, The Homeland. Right. And this particular episode is Homeland, The Refugees. And we're gonna talk a little bit about immigration and the problems that some of, um, as we know, the U.S. is the largest melting pot in the world. And you, got, you all actually talk about some of the problems that immigrants face when they come to the U.S. Well, tell the world who you are and what you do. Well, I'm, I'm a producer. I'm, I'm generally, I, I think of myself as a, as a TV producer. I, I've, I've done long-form stuff for TV. This was really the first project that I was involved in, um, and my fellow producer, Anne-Marie Berger, and we brought in Frank Popper, who's a pretty well-known uh, filmmaker and editor himself in town. So that collaboration kind of pushed me beyond uh, what we would normally do for television and started thinking about these things more in terms of a national documentary series. Mm. The refugee program, that, the, the film that now that we're showing, the film festival is actually a reworked version of what ran on PBS. Okay. The PBS yeah. series was more of a uh, public affairs. There was more policy involved. There were interviews with experts. There was narration. Um, Frank took it upon himself to uh, take that film, take out the narration, take out the, the experts, and just really focus on the stories of the refugees themselves mm -hmm. and see the things that they struggled with and really to see their successes and their failures and their challenges. Wow. wow. So about how many, um, well, you, you would know about, you would know, how many refugees do you actually interview or do you talk about in? We really focus on um, about five, okay. three to five major stories. Okay. We've added a couple that weren't in the original, um, in the original documentary for this film. And um, we chose them for a number of reasons. Okay. One is uh, uh, Justin and a group of, um, Congolese refugees. A lot of people know these guys because they're they're pretty active and they're and they're charming and they're okay. and they're successful. Okay. And um, we we also focus on a Burmese woman and her daughter, who faces lots and lots of problems um, settling in. Uh, we also focus on a teenager uh, at the International Welcome School School by the name of Michelle who is really dealing both with the refugee immigration experience, but also living in a neighborhood where there's, there's quite a bit of crime. Mm -hmm. And one of our stories focuses on the shooting of a refugee boy, the murder of the refugee boy in that neighborhood, and how the neighborhood reacts to that. And I think one of the interesting things that we've done in this film, and I haven't really seen it done very much, in part because it's a very difficult story to tell, and that's the relationship between the refugee community, many from Africa, and their neighbors, African Americans, right. who have a very different experience, and um, there's a sort of tension and distrust between these two communities. Mm -hmm. And one of the stories that we do follow is Cecilia Nadal, mm -hmm. who runs Yitana Productions and does an arts program in a lot of communities, comes into that community. I spoke with Cecilia, yeah. okay, I know her. And after the shooting, she puts together what she calls a peace concert in Amherst Park. Try to bring these two communities together to introduce them. So I think that's one of the, 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 the most interesting parts of this film. It doesn't answer any questions, doesn't resolve the issues. But I think a lot of people think in terms of the refugees, oh, we've done a wonderful thing. We've let mm -hmm. them into this country. But we don't really think about the struggle. We don't know what happens to them. Yeah. You know, the government doesn't even keep track of what happens to them. After about eight months, the benefits run out, and they're, ex they're on their own. And sometimes they move from city to city, sometimes they, uh, they succeed, and sometimes they fall into the same traps that a lot of poor people fall into, drugs and 
too much time on their hands and gangs and, and all of that. So I think that was, if we had a point to make, it's that we don't, we shouldn't just feel proud of ourselves for accepting refugees. I mean, we ought to wonder what happens What are we to doing to help them? Yeah. What are we doing to help them overcome the language barrier? Yeah. And the, for our business owners, the markability of them and yeah. that nature. And our original working title for this, and we, we just simplified all of these to very simple titles, was Rise and Fall because the stories, I mean, what we said in the narration, which is now gone, was these can be some of the most um, inspiring immigrant stories. They can also be some of the most heartbreaking immigrant stories. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, now, your plan is to take Homeland refugees to the national level. It has already been. So, so we, we, we aired this summer what, what PBS wanted, because the other two parts had to do with enforcement issues, um, illegal immigrants, what do we do about that? and jobs issues. What's the impact of immigrants on the economy? Mm -hmm. Are they taking jobs? Are they creating jobs? Do they you know, cost more than they bring? All of that. So PBS wanted to run this series before the election because it dealt with uh, certain policy issues. Uh, the refugee story also ran as its own piece also regarding somewhat with policies, but nobody's really debating mm -hmm. refugees. Nobody's debating immigration reform as when it comes to refugees. So that's why we felt we could take that refugees film and turn it into more of a straightforward observational documentary, which was re really what we were initially set out to do, and just let these people and their stories speak uh, for themselves. So Frank Popper took that as I said, we, we lifted the narration, we mm -hmm. took out the experts, mm -hmm. and we just let those stories. Let the stories speak for yeah. themselves. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of neat. It's, it's really cool because we set out initially to do that, but because of what PBS wanted, we had to make it more policy-driven, more news and public affairs kind of a program. And now I think we have the film that we initially set out to do. You, now, you all will be filming, you're going to be airing, rather, playing here at yeah. the Singles International Film Festival. Tell us the date and time. I think it's the, um, I, I thought you were going to ask me that. It's Sunday, <laughs> Sunday the 17th, or is it Saturday? I haven't written it. Okay. Saturday the 17th at uh, Washington University, the Brown Auditorium, okay. um, in the afternoon. And uh, so we're really thrilled about that because yeah, it's nice to have made a film and then it airs on TV and to bring it back and give it a whole new life and really a new focus. And um, I'm really looking forward to seeing it on the big screen because yeah. I haven't seen it yet on the big screen. Yeah, yeah. And it's very colorful. I mean, these, these folks bring so much um, spirit and life, but also mm. tremendous sadness. Uh, so many of these people, you know, it used to be we brought in large groups uh, from uh, Soviet Union or Vietnam or more recently Bosnia. And um, they often had neighborhoods to settle into, you know, people around them who spoke their language, who knew their culture. Uh, the Bosnians in St. Louis were, were Europeans. They, were, they, they could read and write and, and they, they were, were more Western. Them. Mm -hmm. But in terms of their own language, there may be only a dozen people who speak their language. And um, it, it's one of the challenges. Also, a lot of places, um, these are folks who are coming from rural areas. Maybe they were goat herders or something. They're not literate in their own language. Mm -hmm. So they're coming here to learn English, and they don't, they're not. So the challenge, I think, for the United States now and for the communities, really it's for the communities who accept them, because the United States lets them in, and then a place like the International Institute uh, is paid to help them settle in and to get them started and to keep these programs. I understand. Um, so when people come watch Homeland the Refugees, they're going to get a, a, a grand educational experience then. I think so. I hope so. You, know, you really get, you know, when we, somebody said, what do you want people to get out of this? I think if people watch that film, the next time they see somebody cleaning a room, working in the back of a restaurant, driving a bus to the hotel, a shuttle bus, to wonder, I wonder where these folks came from, and I wonder what they've been through, and I wonder how they're doing. That is, um, for lack of a better word, deep. That is, it's, it's a lot to that, a lot of background. And um, it's going to impact the world, you know. And it probably already is, you yeah, know, with, you, with the national show that you have going on. A lot of these folks, the, 
when you talk about refugees, they're a little different than regular, than usual immigrants. Immigrants, right. A lot of them don't really want to come. They have to come. Right. I mean, what, what would, a refugee is somebody who has been, who for one reason or another can't live in their home. Where they're, yeah. Where either, they're, either maybe drought or, or you know, uh, floods or wars or, or ethnic conflicts. Mm -hmm. They've been driven out of their homes. What do they want? They want to go home. <laughs> they're not saying, oh, I want to go to, I mean, they, they might say I want to go to America, but they want to go home. And for the United Nations, that's the number one priority. If they can get them to go home and resettle, that's the best solution. The second best solution is um, maybe they're in a neighboring country. Maybe they're living in a, in a refugee camp in Kenya. Can they be integrated into that neighboring country? That's, that's second best. The third best and really the last option is to, to send them to the United States or to Australia or to Canada or to Sweden. It seems like it's a good idea, but imagine, you can't go home, never go home. And they're giving you a ticket that says you're going to St. Louis. And then you go to a map if you can, if you even have a map to find out where that is. Any proposed solution, idea of how we can better help refugees as a nation, what would be a yeah. whole solution. I, the, the folks who deal with this, and, and these are usually nonprofit organizations, and they make the point that, um, I don't know how long ago, but we used to give 30, the United States government, federal government, would, would fund 36 months of, of help to help refugees get resettled. Mm -hmm. Three years. Now it's eight months. And so the folks who are advocates for this say what we need, especially now, with the kinds of refugees we're coming in and the kinds of needs they have, uh, you can argue that they have more needs in some ways than refugees did 20 years ago who are getting three years of help, now getting eight months. So I think the folks who are refugee advocates would say what we need is to extend that help because we're, these are people we're investing in. You're on your own, huh? Yeah, and, you're, and, you're, and And homeland refugees is to bring that to light. Yeah. So they can get more help. All right, so where can we find your online resources? We have exploredhomeland.org, okay. and you can find that on the, uh, the, the KETC or Nine Network website, or I think you can just Google exploredhomeland.org, and it'll pop up, and uh, we'll have excerpts from, uh, from the shows and, and lots of other information. Awesome. Thank you for coming on the Benita Thanks Show. I look forward to getting the word out about homeland refugees and uh, we're going to say bye to the world. Be sure to tune in to the St. Louis International Film Festival. Go watch Homeland, the Refugees.